Over 200 experts have shared their secrets to a successful business. Join me, Rose Davidson, as I discover how these experts took their businesses to the next level. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. Talking about all things business by business owners for business owners. Episode 256 with Jill Walker. And keep asking what happens next until you get to the end of the relationship. So one would hope that that is, we'll have a conversation, we'll extend the conversation, we'll send them some form of proposal. They'll say, that looks good. How much does it cost? We'll send them an an acknowledgement, a statement of work of some description. They'll like it, they'll sign. We'll send them an invoice. We'll do some work. Then we'll go part way back and we'll repeat some of that again. And that, depending on the business that you're in, that loop will then happen anywhere between one and a thousand and one times. And at some point, the relationship probably will come to an end. Talking with the experts. Hello, and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. And talking about YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ding on that bell so you get notified when new videos are uploaded. I hope you enjoy today's episode. All businesses require a CRM solution if they are to manage their relationships with clients, customers, prospects as effectively as possible. And a true CRM facilitates a 360 degree view of interactions between members of your organization and your clients and uh, recording these interactions means that you can operate as a team and not be relied on memory. My guest Jill Walker is an expert in CRMs and we're going to be discussing how you can uh, use a a CRM in your business and uh, how how it's a benefit and uh, you know why you should be having one. Hello Jill and welcome so much for joining me today. Hello, Rose, and thank you for having me. I love talking about this sort of stuff. Yes, I'm not, I know what a CRM does, and I know um, why you need to have one or why you should have one, but why is it so important um, rather than just relying on a spreadsheet, for instance? That answer will vary depending on the size of the business. And assuming we've got more than a handful of people relating in some way to your clients and prospects, the main reason is that it enables you to act as a team. So emails, spreadsheets, any of those, they're they're very much one person tools. For sure they have got better and there are now ways you can share them and there are various other things, but they're not really designed to give you a full team access. In other words, having a view, me and my colleagues in my organization, what is the total relationship between us and you and your colleagues? So yes, if we were the two principles, let's say, of this particular client supplier relationship, perhaps our relationship would be the most important, but it's not 100%. And knowing about influencers, knowing about maybe off the cuff comments, all of that can be hugely beneficial. It also does what I call changes an organization from being a push of information to 
uh, pull the information that you need when you need it. To explain that a little bit further, if you haven't got anything worth calling a CRM solution, you might argue that we can get by, we can all know what's going on, because when you, for the sake of argument, send an email, you CC it or BCC it. For the purposes of this conversation, we don't need to differentiate between those to all of my team. And if I then receive something that hasn't been copied to my team, I could then forward it on. What that, of course, results in is an awful lot of emails and most of them are not relevant to most people most of the time. So you're just sort of drowning. And then when you do need something, you've got to go all the way through and think, oh, yeah, that might be useful. Whereas if CRM is just automatically capturing them, then when my colleague needs to phone your colleague, they can just go or, you know, my colleague can just go to CRM, pull up all the information that is relevant, read the bits that are relevant, pick up the phone and have an informed conversation. So I guess, um, uh, you know, starting a CRM, so I'm just going to use um, HubSpot as a, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but that's the one that I use. And so that's the one I'm familiar with. And I'm assuming that all be fairly similar in, in what they can do. So yeah. if you're on a free version of a CRM, for instance, and um, I know that there are very limited facilities within the free thing, which, you know, rightly so, but how would you start building um, your CRM um, so that it's not just a jumbled mess of stuff? Sure. The key thing, and... I'm going to assume now that we are talking about an organization that has at least half a dozen people because a single person or a two person organization obviously can share far more readily without what some small businesses would think of as overhead with a CRM. So we'll take that assumption. What CRM really should be helping you with is your processes as you interact with somebody. So regardless of whether it's free or paid, whether it's HubSpot or Dynamics, which is where I play, or any of the 400 and odd other products that call themselves CRM. The key step is to think about your processes. So if we look at that journey and a typical customer journey is somebody comes into your world somehow. That might be that they found your website and downloaded something or interacted with the website. It might be in the days pre-COVID, they've been to an expo of some sort and you had a stand there and you met them. It might be that somebody in your organization knows somebody and they met them at a social event and somehow it came up that you might be able to help them. So typically that is the very beginning of the relationship. You then need to say, and for each of those and whatever others there are, once that happens, how do we respond? What happens next? What happens next? What happens next? What happens next? And keep asking what happens next until you get to the end of the relationship. So one would hope that that is we'll have a conversation, we'll extend the conversation, we'll send them some form of proposal. They'll say, that looks good, how much does it cost? We'll send them an, an acknowledgement, a statement of work of some description. They'll like it, they'll sign, we'll send them an invoice, 
we'll do some work, then we'll go part way back and we'll repeat some of that again. And that depending on the business that you're in, that loop will then happen anywhere between one and a thousand and one times. And at some point, the relationship probably will come to an end. So you need to map all of that. And once you've done that, you then say, how can our chosen CRM help us with each of those steps? Okay, so uh, I guess if you've got a lead magnet somewhere on your website and you're obviously wanting to collect email addresses um, and, you know, you, you send them off to your email provider so that, you know, that's collected then, then they get into a nurturing sequence. So is it, why, did, why then have a CRM if you've already collecting it through your email provider? I is would argue that... Well, I would argue that it shouldn't be the CRM that's sent on its way. It should be the email provider because most CRMs and certainly HubSpot is good at this will produce high quality emails. And that way you're keeping not only the email address of the person that downloaded your lead magnet, whatever that was, but you're keeping all of the history all in one place. What they also ought to record is whether you, well, whether you opened. So in the context of a lead magnet, they clicked on a button, they downloaded, well, they filled in a form and off the back of that, they received the lead magnet. Have you been thinking about starting a podcast? You can share your knowledge and expertise with people globally. Create original content that is completely unique from anything else out in today's market, not just in terms of style, but also perspective. And when we talk about revenue generating potential, well, let me tell you, it doesn't stop there. The time to start is now. You know that you should be doing it. However, many people are reluctant because they don't know how to produce it or what tools they need to do their podcast. Please feel free to email me at guest at talkingwiththeexperts.com today. And let's talk about how I can help you to build authority and credibility for your business through podcasting. Remember, don't wait for the opportunity, create it. We then want to know, did they open the lead magnet? Or did it, was it just, this looks interesting, actually, maybe not, or I'll do it later and we all know what that means. Then assuming they do open it, one assumes that within that lead magnet, there are some links. So which of the links did they click on, if any? So that's all far more relevant than just, I've now got an email address, give it to the email provider. We could also do that nurture sequence inside most CRMs. And again, that gives you the full history. What emails did they get sent? Which did they open? And within the ones they opened, what links did they click on? Hey, okay, that sounds interesting. Um, so I guess, how can you segment these people then in a CRM? Because, you know, you don't want them all jumbled up into one group of people. You want, especially if you want to retarget them for something else. Absolutely. So you can segment them in a whole range of different ways. Basic segmenting is just making sure that you capture specific data. So if you have a product that is specific for women over 45 for the sake of argument you therefore need to capture gender of the person and age and once you've got that you can then send emails and you can send one email or nurture sequence to people that are female and over 45 and you can send a different email and it could be one different email to everybody that is not female and over 45, or you could further segment it. Another way of segmenting 
is to segment by previous products purchased. So if you've got a client who buys, let's be ridiculous, they, they buy baked beans from you every week. Well, you might want to send them a recipe of doing more interesting things with baked beans but you don't send them Something else other stuff. that's not relevant to it. That Absolutely. So yeah. Someone that's buying baked beans is likely to be interested in recipes that enable them to use those in more interesting ways. But if they're, um, they've actually stated that they don't like baked beans, that's not relevant to them. So that segmenting is quite simply having data and whether it's product purchased attributes like age gender location of the person or it could be slightly more esoteric of other people they know but all segmenting is is having that data and then being able to query so that you get all the people where they meet those criteria. So going back to our first example, all the contacts who are women over 40 versus the people who are either who are not that. And then once you've got that, you can put together a nurture sequence that is specific to them. Wow. Very good. It's uh, it's probably not as difficult as it, as it sounds. It's probably quite simple. And uh, yeah, mm. I think it just takes someone uh, just some time to work it all out. And, and, uh, and I think so. One of the things that I say is that CRM is simple, but not easy. Mm. And that's because at a concept level, it is fairly simple but actually doing what it takes in Dynamics 365, in HubSpot, in Salesforce, in Zoho, or whatever product you're using, doing all of the stuff so that you give the users the ability to segment, to send out an email that looks good on phones, tablets, laptops, mm. desktops, that does count the clicks that does you know the actual doing can be quite a lot more challenging and that's where a lot of people get unstuck they often think it really should be easy i've worked out that i'm interested in people who have bought baked beans from us or women who are over 40 so once i've done that the system should just do all the magic and say well there's your women over 40 there's your people that like baked beans and here's an email that will work for either of them or no that's an interesting idea but an email for each of them and that's the bit of course that it doesn't you know building email templates adding the fields learning how to query but a lot of this would be made a lot easier for people if they understood that the real key is invest in a bit of education. One of the stories that I will use is, would you let a stranger and a young stranger at that drive your car? No. <laughs> right. And I would argue that driving a car is a lot simpler than setting up a CRM solution that a lot of people. But I think too. I think it's really difficult to to set one up. It's easy mm. to dump all the information in there, but it's so. I find it quite challenging to to uh, do all the bits and pieces, and so th therefore, yes, I I need to invest in some training to do that. But I'm not so big that I need the CRM. I've just got all this information in there at the moment, so mm. yeah, let's keep collecting things. <laughs> yes. And I mean, it's like anything, if you don't need it, don't use it. Mm. And certainly for my own business, one of my criteria is that I either know or on the balance of probability 
the organization has more than 10 customer facing client facing people that makes, now, makes sense that's not to say that a smaller business won't get benefit out of microsoft dynamics 365 but and 10 is arbitrary i'll admit that but when i have worked with those smaller businesses what i have found is that their desires and aspirations are similar to a 20 30 40 person business but their budget is a lot smaller mm. and that of course is the problem you cannot have champagne on a lemonade budget absolutely not now this uh, dynamics 365 where where can people who use microsoft where can they find that and is it expensive to purchase well you know the answer is what's expensive and how much money and time will having a properly set up crm solution how much time will it save you most employees when you work out the full cost bear in mind the cost of an employee is generally regarded to be three times their salary or wage or hourly rate whatever it is when you allow for all the on costs so that if we're going to take a really broad average that's going to be at least a hundred dollars australian per hour so if you can save let's say even two hours a week of 10 people that's, that's a really big saving, quite isn't it? a big saving mm. and put that into your crm instead and it keeps going on and on and on to actually get dynamics it is possible, although relatively challenging, to download a third or not download, but to set up a 30 day free trial. And then there are lots of people, obviously, including my organization, who can help you both with that trial and further on, if it makes sense, to set it up for you. I've also got a product which is a step-by-step hands-on if you like tutorial that will teach you the basics of what dynamics 365 will give you now that's not a five minute tutorial i'll be honest but for a product as big as dynamics you're never going to learn it in five or ten minutes and if that's your expectation you're going to be disappointed absolutely absolutely now um do where can people find you if they want to work with you all the usual places online so i have a website opsis.com.au and from there you can get a phone number and i'm very happy to talk to you and i have a linkedin profile maybe i should put the linkedin profile no, in I've the got it here. thank you oh, okay i've got it here thank you yeah, no, and that will all go in the show notes. Um, Jill, you've given me um, food for thought with my uh, moving forward. And um, I'm sure that you're, because you've explained it so um, in layman's terms, I guess, what it does and how it can help you and what, what are the benefits of having it in an organisation and, you know, the size of the organisation that really should be using it. So um, I'm sure our listeners and viewers would have, uh, you know received great benefit from what you know what you've shared with us today uh i um have no other questions do you have a um any wise words that you'd like to share with us before you leave us today i think the one thing that i really ought to say is all we've touched on is that very beginning part of the journey so true crm will help you right through the sales cycle the repeated sale dealing with customer support if there's any issues as well as that early part but i think it's the early part is the setting up it's the most difficult sorry i but when i say the early part i wasn't referring to the setting up i was talking to that when they first come into your world and oh, then the really. email journey we sort of stopped on that just mm. getting a few emails to them but true crm will take you right the way through 
right the way through if you want to to invoicing and repeat sales and solving problems if there are any with the sale and so on yes yeah i, I i'm pretty sure that people were you know aware of that there is a whole cycle other than just the beginning and yes, so we've only touched on the very top of it the tip of the iceberg as it were um because crms are quite um in depth there is so much you can do with them and, mm. and um, they are very beneficial to a business if you can understand how they work <laughs> yes hugely yeah. beneficial yes and, and i think it's the understanding um the processes that it can do for you that will uh, help you through your business and uh, mm. save you time and will save you some money because absolutely you know, people overall are it will save you money overall Yes, so Opsis is uh, is Jill's business. So if you want to find her, you can find that on the uh, on the website. Um, and Jill, thank you so much for um, sharing your knowledge with us today. I've so I've learned a lot just in this short amount of time, and uh, yeah, it's given me food for thought to moving forward. So sure. thank you so much. Well, if you learn that much in twenty minutes, how much would you learn in a whole day? Oh, probably quite a lot. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. Talking with the experts.